Welcome back everyone. Another quick one on the uh, the VIX index. Only a few slides in this one here. Um, again, lots of overlap between CMT2, CMT1, so we're covering both together. Um, so essentially we're just looking at the VIX index. Now we talked about implied volatility uh, last time. The VIX is the implied volatility of the S&P 500 uh, market. So what we want to do is, is really look into that. Um, born out of a concept by Dr. Robert Wiley in 1993. Uh, he was using derivatives of the markets to make, um, you know, these hedging tools. Uh, but eventually CBOE and Goldman Sachs um, got involved and developed the VIX based on his work. Um, when it first was created, it was on the S&P 100, but then moved to the S&P 500 as it's obviously, when today we consider it the benchmark uh, of performance in, uh, in the markets. Um, and so that's what the VIX is measuring. Now, the VIX is an indicator of the 30-day implied volatility. It's determined through uh, options activity, uh, but obviously, again, expressed, all these volatility figures are always expressed as annualised um, numbers. So calculating the VIX, the way that this was done, now again, I don't know how much of this you're going to need to know for the exams, um, but uh, price, basically, when you look at an option, you're going to have a bid ask, like we have with equities and futures. Whenever there's an options, uh, you know, the writer has written the option, they're, they're asking a certain amount of money for it. And then you're going to have people who want to buy that, and they're bidding beneath, and you've got this spread between the bid and ask. Now, when they do the calculation for the VIX, what they do is they take the midpoint between the, the bid and the ask, so find the midpoint there, and they use that as a value um, for that option, rather than the last executed trade, um, uh, because they want to make sure that it's irrelevant. They want to use the most relevant at the money, or you know, and also the out of the money um, options that are, are very close to where the um, actual price is. Um, contracts uh, used are from the S and P 500 index. They'll only use. Um, the next two expiry dates. Um, so, you know, if we're sitting here at the end of February, they probably use um, the, the end of March. Most of these options, they expire around the third week, uh, sometimes on a Friday, um, but they'll expire then. So we take the, the third week in March and the third week in April, uh, the next two expiries. Now, as we get within eight days of the expiry of the March, because there's so much liquidation going on and things uh, that could give false readings, they no longer consider the, the March one, they would no longer consider it, instead do April and May. Um, so their window is up to two expiries away, um, but the least uh, is eight days. They won't go any shorter than that. Uh, so that's all brought together. All the options are used, they create from all of that, a synthetic uh, at the money option, which expires in exactly 30 days. So there's time weightings going on, weighted averages, that type of thing, uh, to create this one synthetic option. Um, and then the VIX is the implied volatility of that synthetic option. And so that's how we get to that number. Now you can go into a lot of detail. I think the text has links to um, where you can read Excel spreadsheets that go into the exact math behind it all. But I think for the purposes of the exam, that will give you everything you need to know um, about the VIX and about how it's calculated. Uh, so the implications of rising or falling VIX index. Uh, so what we've got is that there's an inverse relationship between implied volatility and the direction of the S&P 500. Um, really still think that the uh, price leads volatility rather than the other way around. Uh, I think that, you know, we get, as we start to get these drops, when you dig in, you see drops. Hang on, I'm looking at the wrong chart. Let me come over here you will see a drop like this um, before you see a spike in implied volatility. Uh, so it is a reactionary thing. Um, but nevertheless, a move in price is going to move down in price is going to be a move up in implied vol volatility. And you can see how that continues. And then as price uh, continues to go up through here, uh, then volatility is going down through here. Uh, and you can see how that goes. Uh, a rising VIX. 
uh, equals increased demand for put options, hedging uh, on the underlying index, which obviously drives up the volatility. A rise in VIX coincides with a falling market and vice versa. All right, a couple more calculations. Again, same variance of what we did in implied volatility. Really want to lock this home because, uh, you know, these are just easy questions to get points on. So the 30-day movement uh, equals the value of the VIX divided by the square root of 12. I'm going to keep saying this. Don't be put off. You know, the fact that the VIX is the 30-day implied volatility, but it's annualized. So to get that number back, we've got to divide by the square root of 12. So a couple examples there. Um, the VIX, if the VIX is at 20%, uh, then to convert, uh, we need the relationship between annual and 30 days, which is 1 to 12. So we plug that into the calculation. So for the 30-day, one-month price movement, we will take our 20% divided by the square root of 12, uh, which is 20% divided by 3.46, which gives us 5.77%. And that is what we expect the market movement to be over the next 30 days. That's what one standard deviation is, if you like. Um, for the one day price movement, you can see that, do the same thing, but divide by 252, square root of 252, uh, which is essentially 20% divided by 16, around 1.26%. Um, so you can do those calculations fairly easily. Uh, just a table of some equity market volatility indices, I think based on the learning objectives that you need to be aware of these, uh, particularly in CMT2, really this is just memorising uh, which one goes with which. So, you know, the VXD is part of the Dow Jones, the VXN part of NASDAQ, RVX with uh, the Russell 2000, VXO with the SP100, and the uh, QQV with the, uh, the AMEX uh, Q's um, index there as well. So that's the VIX. There's not much more. I probably could have put that in with the other session there. Uh, CMT1, you just need to be able to describe the VIX index. You know, it's using those implied volatility concepts. Uh, explain the implications of rising or falling VIX, what it does to price. Um, uh, etc. CMT2, you need to calculate the 30-day expected movement of an index or a stock. Um, so again, that's more the implied volatility side. Uh, explain the relationship between the VIX and market movement, and then be able to interpret volatility signals as part of a market forecast as well. So that's it with uh, VIX, a nice quick one, um, and obviously ties together with implied volatility as well, and then leading out of the option studies, this whole group uh, works together. Thanks so much for watching and we'll continue on with the uh, next lesson.